Hey folks, it's Marvin Cash, the host of the Articulate Fly, and we're back with another Central PA Fishing Report with George Costa from TCO Fly Shop in State College. How you doing, George? I'm amazing as always, Marv. How are you? Uh, as always, just trying to stay out of trouble. And, um, you know, we were talking before we started recording, uh, and we're recording this, I guess, on Thursday. You know, you're starting to get the beginning of that yucky nor'easter weather. Yeah, it's not looking too pretty this coming weekend. We're definitely going to be getting uh, anywhere between half and an inch of rain Friday into Friday night. So fish today, fish early tomorrow if you can. I think the weekend is not looking nice at all. Um, expect water to come up. We're, we're, we've been good levels uh, for the past couple of weeks. Everything's been above average, but nice and clear and great flows. Fishing has been excellent the past couple of weeks. Um, but this weekend, not looking good. Um, early next weekend, as soon as the water starts dropping, we are going to be in prime time fall fishing. You know, the water's going to be up off color, dropping. Streamers are definitely going to start moving fish. They have been, um, you know, so it's looking good early to mid next week um, is where I would slate, you know, coming out and, and, and getting out there on the water. Um, other than that, we've been, you know, very, very typical fall mode, uh, maybe a little behind where we usually are. Uh, we're starting to see reds pop up here and there. So if you are out on the water, please start watching for those reds. You know, those clear patches of gravel, don't step on them. Don't fish to them. You leave them alone. And um, it's, it's definitely that time of year to, to start watching out for them. Yeah. And just to remind folks, you know, you are a relatively, you know, by, I guess, 21st century streamer fishing standards, a small streamer guy. Myself personally. Yeah. I mean, you know, I, everybody's a little different, but um, I, I like not huge streamers. I just don't think they're necessary around here. Um, we don't have massive fish around here. I mean, we have some bigger ones, but you know, you're going to catch, you're going to, your, your hookup rate's going to be a lot more on something slightly smaller just because the class size of our fish here is, you know, especially on like Spring Creek tends to be a little small, you know, our average fish might be 12, 13, 14 inches long. And if you're throwing a three, four inch streamer at it, it's going to grab it. You're not going to get the hook on it. You're going to get a lot of grabs, but you're not actually going to connect. So, um, I prefer slightly smaller streamers here locally. If you know, you want to go and look for those big hogs all day long, then get up into that three to five inch, you know, bigger streamer category. But you know, it depends on what you're after. If you want, to actually catch fish, try a smaller streamer. If you want to just ignore those little guys that go after that big one, hunk some meat at them. Yeah, there you go. And what are you seeing on the dry fly side? Is it probably what mostly blue winged olives sporadically? Yeah, sporadic olives, caddis here and there. We definitely seen some Octobers around here and there. I personally have in the past week, I've had a bunch of clients out on the water and I think I've seen two fish rise in the past week and a half. Um, you know, olives are around, caddis are around, but fish don't I just really haven't been keyed in on them um, from what I've been seeing lately out on the J or Spring Creek. Um, just haven't seen fish really like actively rise. And there's a few here or there, but you know, if you want to go throw a dry fly, you can definitely, afternoons are still warm enough to throw a little beetle or an ant, search around. Um, you can definitely like search around with a caddis and, you know, you'll take a fish here and there, but definitely not a, a consistent dry fly hatch um, the past couple of weeks for sure. And after this big push of water, you know, got to see what that, you know, see what that happens after that. Yeah, I got it. And I guess that really says if you don't want to throw streamers, you better just stick to the nymphing game, right? Yeah, nymphing's been really consistent lately. Um, smaller, darker patterns are working well. A little caddis submergers have been working pretty good for us, too. Um, and, you know, fish are, fish are eating. Uh, definitely been, you know, more bite windowy this time of year. You know, they'll eat good early in the morning and then shut down for three or four hours. And then later in the afternoon, you'll get a good two-hour window. Seems to be consistent with, uh, you know, feeding feeding patterns. And, you know, every, every stretch of stream is going to be a little different. But, you know, you might go an hour before you get a hit, and then you might get three in a row. Yeah, well, there you go. That's why they call it fishing and not catching, folks. And Indeed. Yes, indeed. And, you know, we love questions at the Articulate Fly. You can email them to us or send them to us on our Facebook or Instagram page. And if we use your question, I'll send you some Articulate Fly swag. And we were in a drawing for something cool from the shop at the end of the season. And uh, before I let you hop, George, why don't you let folks know shop location hours and all that kind of good stuff. We are here at 2030 East College Avenue in State College, Pennsylvania. We are here Monday through Saturday, 9 to 6. Sunday 9 to 3 and tcoflyfishing.com on the world wide web uh, well there you go well folks I always say it fall is my favorite time to fish and you know 
stay out of the high water that's not going to be productive this weekend, but get out there and pull some streamers early next week and catch a few. Tight lines, everybody. Tight lines, George. Take it easy, Mark.